Hey, Trucked Up guys and gals. Breaking news this week. We all know what happened when China's deep seek absolutely blew the world away with its chat GPT divine low cost AI platform. Well, China just did it again to legacy autos EV sector. BYD just dropped a bombshell on the EV manufacturing world by announcing it has not only invented the fastest charging network and batteries in the world, but it is already in the early process of building out four thousand one megawatt chargers that will render Tesla's Chinese superchargers outdated and obsolete. No, this is not clickbait. This is happening as we speak. More importantly is a Chinese made full size EV pickup truck, a part of their EV invasion plans. Rumor has it that after the success of BYD's eRev shark, such a project is closer to reality than legacy auto had ever previously feared. There's so much here. So let's dive right into this amazing and consequential development and get totally trucked up. As you know, I just put out a video about the top two e-rev trucks in America, the Scout Terra Harvester and the Ram 1500 Ram Charger. And there is a stopgap toward fully capable EV trucks. Many estimate that we're about a decade away from matching or surpassing traditional internal combustion specs with a pure EV truck. So an interim line of vehicles like eRevs makes perfect sense. True. But as I also pointed out in another video that I did several months back, I'll provide a link at the end of this video and in the description below. I estimated we were much closer than that and rapid advancements would disrupt the EV truck market much, much faster. Well, my estimate may have made me look rather prophetic and somehow enlightened for a complete dumbass because the world is changing at a breakneck pace and legacy auto will either somehow catch up or burn up in the flames of the EV dragon known as China. Imagine charging up your EV truck in the same time it takes to fill with gas. Now, picture having the range to do what you do now with your gas or diesel truck for a fraction of the cost with no need for any side fuel with far more torque and horsepower and with greater payload and towing capacity. Radical unrealistic pipe dreams you say? Mark it on your calendar and save this video because we just rounded the bend and in no more than 24 to 48 months, the reality of this week's developments will come to define the future of every EV truck. I'm certain of it. Sure, I'm throwing out a lot of hot potatoes here. So where's the beef, Simon? Okay, the details. BYD has surpassed Tesla as the largest maker of electrified vehicles in the world. Now, it does include hybrids in there. Most Americans don't even know about the company. On top of that, over 75% of all electric vehicles made in the world today are made in China. The country owns the IP. It produces 90% of the minerals needed for them and manufactures most of the batteries after betting heavily on EVs over a decade ago. Now, these companies are so far ahead, there's nothing in the West that can currently hope to compete. Also, don't forget that the US and to some degree Canada are kind of the EV slow adopter countries. The rest of the world is barreling ahead. We've been completely outlapped and rather than force legacy auto to compete by opening the floodgates, Canada and the US have put up as many protectionist walls as possible to slow its arrival and cocoon the big three auto giants. To drive home how far ahead these Asian automakers are, in a recent Rich Rebuilds video, he discovered how much of a threat Chinese automobiles are right now. To his shock, he discovered that their EVs are a fraction of the price with higher build quality than anything in the same category in the US while providing unprecedented range and charging speeds and all kinds of wonderful capabilities. BYD's entry EV, the Seagull for example, would be equivalent to $14,000 US but matches the specs of a $40,000 Model 3. Even with tariffs and export costs, it's already selling in Brazil for 20,000 US. I strongly suggest checking out the Rich Rebuild video in the description below if you want to get a handle on just how far behind North America really is. But now we've been totally lapped again and the race 
hasn't even freaking started. BYD is already taking orders for their new Han L sedan and the Tang L SUV. Both are pure EVs, both of which are priced below $40,000 US, making them cheaper than a Tesla, but offering some absolutely insane numbers. You'll want to sit down for this. Let's start with the charging multiplier. What's that you say? It's a measure of charging and discharging speeds. 1C is equivalent to a battery being uh, capable of charging and or discharging in a period of one hour. These two vehicles can handle a 10C rate. In other words, the hang and tang Hmm, sounds like some kind of drawing technique for orange juice. They can fill up in six minutes. BYD claims that with their one megawatt chargers, these cars can add two kilometers of range every second or 400 kilometers in five minutes. No, really. They went so far as demonstrating it live. BYD reported that they have further advanced their already leading LFP chemistry blade batteries to the new Super E platform, able to charge at a freaking bent level of 1000 volts at 1000 amps, meaning 1000 kilowatts. Put that into perspective for a second. What's the fastest Tesla V3 supercharger average? The peak rate is 250 kilowatts, a quarter of these new chargers. But they can't hold that level anywhere near as long as BYD is promising. Even Tesla's upcoming V4 chargers that have yet to be seen in most locations are offering what now seems a paltry 325 kilowatt with a stated peak power of around 500 kilowatts. So half. Keep in mind that to install a one megawatt charger requires a huge <laughs> direct feed off the grid. But in China, it's already happening. Tied into the release of these two vehicles that are already being pre-ordered is a network of 4,000 one megawatt charging locations BYD is promising to install. But we always hear about how the grid would break and our energy could never withstand such demands. Funny, Europe is already doing it, Asia's already doing it, even Canada is doing it to some degree, uh, no broken grids yet. In fact, their grids are all more stable than the US. So someone is feeding up a whole heaping helping of FUD burgers on this one. It's called supply and demand. That's how capitalism's supposed to work. It's kind of ironic that China, not the US, is the one driving that. BYD has already addressed having these things in locations where sufficient power isn't even available by installing some yet undisclosed form of high-tech storage facility, which we're going to dive into in much further detail in an upcoming video. So don't forget to click that subscribe button to get notified when that's out. Anyway, how are such numbers even possible in the first place? We don't have access to the nitty gritty of the tech. BYT's, yeah, they're not going to release their heavily guarded intellectual property to some dumbass like me under any circumstance, or anyone else for that matter. But we do know that there's been a chemistry breakthrough in the LFP blade batteries themselves, along with another milestone of incorporating a new generation of silicone carbide power chip. But, but what does any of that mean? Well, I'll explain the blade batteries first. BYD went with a prismatic shape rather than cylindrical resembling a long flat blade, which is, well, where the name comes from. The thin flat shape of the cell allows them to be used as structural supports within the battery pack itself, maximizing space utilization and reducing the need for bulky support structures and a crap pile of glue like Tesla's structural battery packs, which means BYD's blade batteries also can be easily serviced. I mean, wow, who the funk? The blade battery also uses lithium iron phosphate LFP cells, which have superior thermal stability and lower risk of thermal runaway, which basically means less coolant complexity. LFP have historically had lower density than NMC and thus not as good of range, but that's obviously been changed. Something's going on there. It's been rapidly advancing all over China already, but it looks like whatever BYD pulled off in their super E thingies might have solved that problem as well, because we know both of these vehicles will have between six and 700 kilometers of range on a single charge. All we know about what is actually going on inside the battery is what BYD has, has provided us, which is that somehow the blade batteries allow faster ion transfer in the electrolyte 
and less resistance through the diaphragm, resulting in faster charging without the heat. This still secret structure is being referred to as flash charge capable. <laughs> One megawatt, that's a, a pretty good little, uh, little phrase for them. For the first time in history, EV charging has entered the megawatt era. So to recap, th <laughs> think about how far behind legacy auto is right here and now, just, just with this. Look at just these points from BYD's new battery. Higher energy density, insane charging speeds, improved safety, space efficiency, simplified maintenance, lower weight it, it, over almost every other EV manufactured today. And that's just the batteries. BYD threw down the gauntlet and threatens to leave Legacy Auto struggling to stay alive with these next ones. But before I get to this, I have to talk about my own struggles and survival for the channel here to stay alive. I've got big dreams for trucked up EVs to bring EV truck adventures to life. I've got viewers like James and his wife showing off their lightning and trucked up hoodie in Alaska. Andrew and Mike with their Silverado EVs in Greater Vancouver. Rich in Oklahoma with his epic lifted lightning on all terrains. Mark in Winnipeg with his trusty truck Rocky, likely the only Rivian R1T in Manitoba. It's these stories showcasing real people and businesses highlighting how EV trucks fit into work and play every day that I want to share more with you, but I can't do it without your help. Just the equipment to do this kind of filming is currently beyond my reach. I hope you can help me get there with a donation through, through the thanks button down below here, or by joining my amazing and supportive Patreon family by clicking the flat tire and coffee fund link in the description below, or, or simply pick up a stylish and, and highly sexy trucked up t-shirt, sweater, or hoodie, a cap, a mug to keep this channel going. And also keep those photos and stories coming and I'll continue to share them. Thank you deeply for your support. But hey, do you want to know who really needs help right now? Every Western <laughs> company making EV motors because BYD just delivered them all really bad news along with their new batteries. The company has reinvented the electric motors that will drive these two flagship vehicles. These high revving powerhouses achieve an unheard of 30,511 revolutions per minute. This is the highest RPM of any mass produced electric motor in the world. This was considered impossible only, only a couple of years ago. Lucid is around 20,000. Tesla manages around 23,000, I believe. And again, a bunch of Chinese manufacturers are getting within BYD's neighborhood, but it gets even more mental. BYD's motor has a peak power output of 500 and 80 kilowatts, the highest of any mass-produced EV motor in the world, exceeding the performance of a V12 fuel engine, producing 777 horsepower and offering a zero to 60 time of 2.7 seconds in a car that's selling for under 38,000 US. BYD also claims the motor has a power density of 16.4 kilowatts, per kilogram. That's the best in the EV industry. Basically, what they've pulled off is more power for less weight. To translate all of this into everyday terms, BYD just carpet bombed almost every Western R&D department in the EV space in Legacy Auto. But you know, this Chinese leader still wasn't satisfied with embarrassing the living hell out of every auto OEM. Uh, by sending the entire EV sector into a freaking tailspin because it decided, you know what, let's throw some hundred proof whiskey into that wound. And they did. Remember that jargonish thing about the silicon carbide or silicone or silicon or silicon? Silicon. Silicon. The silicon carbon chips. Yeah, well, it gets even worse for everybody else because to handle these Area 51 alien developed UFO motors, BYD has developed a new generation of silicon carbide power chips inside these things with voltage ratings up to 1500 volts. Do I need to even say it? Yeah, I can't say it. Nobody else has ever mass produced that either. So that's like, we got the chargers, we got the, we got the batteries, uh, we got the motors, we got the chips. But here's the thing. There's a bunch of car companies nipping at BYD's heels. The higher end EVs that they haven't been really focusing on BYD as much are, are coming 
right behind him, threatening to outdo them at some point. Uh, the bad news for the West? Yeah, they're all Chinese, with a little uh, Korean sprinkled in there for added effect. All kinds of tech is coming out of Asia at light speed. There's full battery recycling at incredibly low cost, to the point that soon, most new battery materials in China will be harvested from old batteries and won't need to be mined at all. There's NEO with its battery swapping EVs. So charge times mean nothing other than just swapping out a battery and, and driving away with a brand new one uh, fully filled like some kind of pit crew. And it's all automated. How about AI tracking drones that, that accompany the car? The tech innovations go on and on and on and none of it is happening in North America. But we've stopped all that pesky Chinese innovation in its tracks, right? We've effectively cocooned our domestic auto industry in a protective tariff bubble of happiness to waffle about without worry with on again, off again, we'll call them yeah, initiatives based on whichever way the political wind is blowing or blowing out of their butts. Legacy auto can rest easy and languish a few more years in self-imposed automotive dark ages mediocrity, right? Yeah, no. That's not going to happen. Never has happened in history. Never will. BYD just built its fifth, fifth car freighter, able to ship just under 10,000 automobiles in one sailing. That's a gross volume of between 40 and 50,000 vehicles to ship at a time. There's only one reason for this massive BYD fleet export. And with new US policy, trying to force all domestic automakers to either return to manufacturing in America or be tariffed into oblivion, all of Europe, South and Central America, and definitely Canada, might fill those soon to be vacant auto factories by welcoming Chinese auto OEMs to make their cars and trucks on home turf. If that happens, I'll let you extrapolate the likely outcome. But words like survival and uh, bankruptcy will pop into your head quite frequently. BYD already has plans to manufacture the E-Rev Shark in Mexico. And many Chinese companies are working on backdoor access to our markets already using rideshare programs such as Uber and other options to gain entry tariff-free or at least at lower cost. The BYD Shark E-Rev truck is already highly sought after in Canada the US, Australia, and parts of Europe. And if you don't think BYD sees the hole in the market for a smaller EV truck based on the feedback on its already in-demand e-rev, you're kidding yourself. More importantly, BYD's Shark isn't even sold in China. It was exclusively designed for foreign markets. BYD aims to compete with established pickup trucks like the Ford Ranger, the Chevrolet Colorado, Toyota Hilux, and Nissan Navara on a global scale. And what is the largest selling segment here in North America? Trucks. According to Top Speed, there are already 10 Chinese EV trucks that are designed to compete directly with the smaller segment of the Western truck market. And most of them are pure EVs. Imagine for a moment taking the tech revealed this week and putting it in a full BEV pickup. The moment that happens, I'm certain of two things. One, EV trucks are not only here to stay, but about to dominate every traditional truck pickup space, including diesel and mid to heavy duty pickups. And two, the big three are in big trouble unless they hit the electric acceleration pedal or start making some massive alliances if they ever hope to survive the tsunami about to hit North American shores. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to take a look at this one that started it all regarding the future of EV truck technology and see how the use of my psychic abilities, I successfully prognosticated the near future with some of these breakthroughs already coming true. As always, thanks for watching.